Welcome to the shortwave radio channel, and uh, how do I know, without looking at any websites, that there's a possibility of sporadic e-skip? Well, sporadic e-skip told you there are times of the year where they are, it happens more often, especially in the summer. Um, June, July are like the two big months, but it can happen at any time, and to understand how it happens, well, often has to do with looking at different frequency ranges. Also, um, it is to note that in the summertime, um, high frequencies tend to not have a lot of skip, even in high solar activity, uh, like in the wintertime, because the ionization of the ionosphere is so, so powerful that it actually absorbs a lot of the frequencies, the shortwave frequencies, in, even on the higher bands. That's why 10 meters is never that great in the summertime, but it is amazing in the winter. So in the summer, if you start seeing anything happen, one of the first frequencies, of course, to check out is the Super Bowl channel. Channel 6 of the CB band, if you have a CB radio, channel 6, or 27025 on a radio. And listen there. If it's quiet, uh, probably nothing is happening. If you hear very powerful skip stations, all of those CB ears out there, and, you know, going through and, and hammering the radio uh, one after the other, chances are you are actually in a sporadic E uh, possibility. Keep in mind, contrary to regular solar activity, if uh, it gets into darkness, sporadic e-skip will often continue working because it's not dependent on the solar activity. It's dependent on another phenomena that is creating these ionized clouds. So it could be one in the morning and pitch darkness and you will have some signals coming through. So this is a sporadic e-skip. It can happen at any time of day or night. And it can happen all over, you know, any any day of the year, but it will happen more often in the summer, the peak of the summer, uh, June, July, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. So you hear stuff there. You hear a lot of CV ears there. What's the next step? Well, take out your scanner radio. Take out any device you might have that goes into 50 megahertz. Uh, one of the main frequencies that you will check out at 50 megahertz will be the 6 meters or 50 megahertz FT8. Now, even if your radio, your scanner radio, doesn't have um, any, um, you know, single sideband or anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, 50 megahertz, very often when it's open, wide open on FT8, even on FM mode, you hear the tones of FT8 on uh, 5313, or your scanner might actually want you to be on 15315. It doesn't matter. You're going to hear something. You hear something there, then it's time to go to the FM band. Because now we know that even 50 megahertz is propagating. And especially if the signals on 5313 are very strong, go up and tune your radio. It's time to go up and tune the bottom part of the FM band, uh, 87 to, say, 94, 95, often... Uh, sporadic e-skip actually reaches the bottom part of the FM band, but not necessarily uh, all of it, but you never know. Uh, sporadic e, like I had yesterday, actually, apparently some stations even as high as uh, 104, 105 megahertz were propagating. So it's time to go and between the strong ch channels that you listen to and tuned slowly be patient wait a minute or two on each frequency you're tuning because maybe you're in a uh, fade out and uh, there's something there but if you're going too fast you're going to miss whatever station is there and this will be of course um, a, a great experience if you uh, witness fm band dxing so like happened yesterday so a few tips here that hopefully will help you out uh, to uh, do FM band DXing. And of course, don't forget that when that happens, if you have a scanner radio, scan from 30 to 50 megahertz. They'll be surprised at what you can hear from very far away. 
If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.